This is FFPÖ, your primary source for Austrian film and TV critique, where two minds come together to take apart the work of people who actually matter. Welcome back to a new episode of FFP. My name is Paul and this is the 37th episode recorded on the 25th of April 2017. And I'm really glad to have an old B back, my, the first member of the 1K club <laughs> and uh, a newbie. And yes, guys, introduce yourself. Uh, hi, I'm Jack Holmes. And hey, I'm Greg Rikas. Hi guys, thank you for being back, hey, Jack. Thank and you for thanks for having us. And thanks for being here for the first time, Greg. This is this is lovely. And, yeah. and we chose a really lovely movie to 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 celebrate the fact that Jack is the first guy who uh, whose episode broke a thousand views. Thank you guys, by the way, for for listening in and and, yeah, and watching. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> Jack Jack is not comfortable with his own success. No, it's it, <laughs> hasn't it's had, startling. You didn't share the episode. You're like. Like, nah, well, there, gonna... there was still stuff in there I didn't want my parents to hear. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, if it makes you feel any better, I haven't shared any podcast. Maybe this I've episode. Well, the, the plan was I was just going to get like, wait until I had four or five that I needed to share. Yeah. And then put them all at the same time with the with the idea of my parents aren't ever going to bother to listen to all of them. Okay. So yeah. like, this one will definitely, they'll both get shared probably soon. Great. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So, and Greg, you, you, people know who Jack is. Oh yeah. And put your phones on si silent mode because I just fucked up. But yeah, <laughs> Greg, Greg, what, what do you do? Who are you? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm Greg Rikas. I'm a, a, a musician from Canada. I'm right now in the middle of a tour, uh, kind of all over North America and Europe. And I've been right in Europe for about a month or so. Nice. Yeah. How did you enjoy your time here so far? So far, so good. Yeah. Yeah. Because this was the, like from all the movies that I could pick, that was the most international thing, but still European through and through. This movie was the answer, I think. Yeah. When, when you first mentioned it, I thought it was going to be all in, in German and then I would yeah. have to the test would be me <laughs> trying to figure out what was going on. So this is totally different than what I thought. So yeah. It's cool. yeah. So we watched Fahrenheit 451, the 1966 book adaptation movie starring Oscar Werner and Julie Christie. Um, Didn't we say it was Julie, Julie Christie? Because she's yeah. English. Yeah. I, 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 she's so French and she also uh, remembers the book in French. So I thought. Yeah, but she's also very not French. Right? Oh, yes. With her not being French and, <laughs> and speaking yes. English throughout yes. the entire film. Yes, and being probably the, the, the woman with the least accent. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> in the whole movie, like everybody else had a thick accent of some sort. Um, yeah, uh, starring Oscar Werner. That's why we watched it because the movie itself is made by a, a French guy, and the, it is all in English. It's based on a, an, an, an English novel, Fahrenheit 451, and um, yeah, it's it's. Uh, we don't know much about how how faithful it was to the book. Because not, none of us had read it yet. No, never no. Yeah. haven't read it. <laughs> Just uh, a heads up. Would you read the book now and after watching the movie to figure some shit out? I'd, I'd probably read the book or I'd, I might listen to the audio book. That's <laughs> like working my way down. And then after, if I'm, then I'll read it. But, but what if the book was read by Oscar Werner? Yeah, even I, more so? Even or? more so, <laughs> yes. yeah. Maybe I'll start with someone else, Oscar Werner, read the book myself, because he has and then the, I'll write a book. He has That's the it. most synthetic robot human voice ever, <laughs> as we witnessed in this movie. And yeah, um, let's go to the first thing in, in, in this here podcast, and that is plot. Plot. Yes, so the plot was pretty thick, I thought. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough synopsis to give, but yeah, why, yeah. Do, why don't you guys start? Yeah, Jack, what, oh, what I, did you get out of uh, it? Put the dumbest person up first. Finally. Yes, yes. I, That's why. I, do you I want, want me to, to just summarize it first? Yeah, like, make the, make, we, we don't have a, a, a rule book we go okay. after, so yeah, um, just right, go so ahead. It's 
was supposed to be a futuristic society yes. where they've outlawed books because they uh, make they people never, they never, sad. They, yeah, they make people sad, but they never really went into why books, like the real reason books were outlawed, or did they? Yeah. And I just didn't pick up on it. <laughs> um, no, it's. I think it was all propaganda. Yeah. Everything, everything that was said about the reasons why books were outlawed sounded like conjecture or propaganda. Yeah, but what the real reason? Books, I don't think why, so. No, why no. Big Brother were no. in I, books? Well, like, the, the reason is to keep the people stupid and ill-informed and 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 docile. They, they had, they pretty much had a free society, so it doesn't. I don't know. I didn't get why they were burning. Burning books while I still think, giving I've, people like the normal level of freedom they would otherwise have just without. Yeah, books. but they don't use that freedom. They are they are basically sheeple at that point. Wake up, sheeple! <laughs> um, yeah, but it does. It, it, I don't know. It felt weird to like. All right, so fine. They're sheeple and they're not yeah. using their minds, which was demonstrated. But and it's also far in the future because the old fireman said that uh, he remembers it as a cadet. And he was in his 60s, yeah. so that must have been like 50 years or something like that, that he was burning books. Uh, so so that, that was basically the standard. This, this all I get, I'm just saying, it, it felt weird to not have any sort of like state presence. Yeah. It's, it's kind of just like 1984, but without having... <laughs> the oppressive government yeah. in your face. Or just like showing the oppressive government. Yes. It's just if, if, I don't know. To me, it just yeah. felt weird. Greg? Yeah, I, I guess it, it was implied that there was someone kind of living the high life and these people were just, like you say, the sheeple doing yeah. the medial jobs for pretty much, right. you know, drugs and, and television and kind of stuff. Yeah, there was no, they, they didn't show any kind of supermarket or, or, or uh, like any kind of entertainment besides the TV. Yeah, I, I also thought it was weird that they made dinner and then instead of eating it, they started smoking after they made it. Or maybe I just <laughs> missed that part. And the other thing we pointed, you pointed this out, is that the guy was able to read. Yes. But, so obviously, if he was taught to read, this hasn't been imposed, no books, for that long. Yeah, or, or it just or, got... Got it's getting more and more extreme. Maybe just yeah. his, his was the first generation where now the children aren't taught at all to read. Like yeah. He was obviously taught to read as a kid. Right. He was so struggling, though. He was struggling. I mean, yeah. I, I struggle to read. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm then like imagine a 35 yourself, man. Yeah, yeah and then but, imagine yourself not reading for like 10 years or something like yeah, that. And yeah, yeah. picking it up again. Exactly. Yeah. But I don't know, like, to think of what's going on right now. Like, yeah, my lifestyle is... I read a lot because I read messages people wrote yeah. and stuff. I don't read a lot of literature. I listen to a lot of podcasts. I listen right. to a lot of audiobooks. Yeah. Just the way things are going, I don't read a lot. So I don't know. It's, I think it's close to kind of what's going on. It's definitely like a very accurate prediction in some ways, yes. but it's so well, hard it, to predict the future. Yeah, so. Again, it, it's magnificent of how much this movie got right in 1966. Like this is 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. And still he was figuring out flat screen TVs, uh, drug abuse, uh, but but like government sponsored drug abuse, basically, which are heroin and 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 no, well, not heroin, but uh, yeah, yeah, the, all the epidemic drug abuse. <laughs> you want to phone in a friend? <laughs> hey, oh, Reggie. Oh, we have a special phone in guest. Hey, sorry, me and Paul are recording a podcast right now. I'm gonna leave this in. Yeah, that's fine. This is, you, you can cut. <laughs> this is. <laughs> what? Sorry. Yeah, I'll I'll get them to you tonight. All right. All right. I'd better go now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Special guests calling in. Reginald and Barris, them, he can't let me have friends. anything myself. Yeah, <laughs> he just has. He has to be all over everything I yeah. do comedically. He's jelly because he, his his episode is doing not as well as yours. Yeah, and you're, <laughs> I'm gonna hijack this now. Um, yeah. So so the, the the plot basically follows one of the firefighters, and the firefighters are repurposed um, as a as a. As Book actual burner. fighters who fight with fire, <laughs> that's that's more accurate than they, they're not because houses are all fireproof. 
so there is no need for firefighters. I thought that was that was ill ill advised logic because like there can be a car crash or there can be uh, I don't know yeah, a, a cat a gets tree, stuck in a tree or, like tr- that's or trees on fire. Like they, how do they put out those? Or is the tree also fireproof of so all the, of a sudden? The, there are some holes in the plot. I yes. mean, they, they've kind of they haven't tied up every loose end. Yes. Yes. Well, this yeah. is where you should read the book. I yes. guess so, yeah, yeah. The book is maybe more thorough. <laughs> Again, it's it's ironic that we didn't read the book to a movie that's all about... Not Bobby reading movie. books. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So we're, uh, yeah, yeah. we're no better, I guess. But. Yeah. <laughs> When it comes to that, like, yeah, um, yeah. So it follows Oscar Werner, whose whose character's name is Guy Montag. Great name. Great, great name. So Montag means Monday. Yeah. So he's Guy Monday, which is generally a boring guy. Like, yes. You know, I'm a Monday yeah. guy. Yeah. Like if someone's like, "Oh, I want you to meet my friend. He's a Monday guy." Yeah. I would probably think. I'm not going to hang out with this guy again. <laughs> like, the chances of us Facebook friending are like, yes. got to be approaching zeros. So. And he's has been working faithfully for the fire department for five years now, Fahrenheit five, 451. And they, um, yeah, they go about their business burning books, basically, and arresting people and shearing people? Or was that the police force? Shearing people? I think no. that was the police force. Okay. So that's one of their duties of all of a sudden. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah, if you got basically if you read books or you got long hair. Those yeah, that's are the big no no. Fucking hippies. In the future, yeah. Fucking hippies. That, like nineteen sixty six, this would per- perfectly fit with, with that scenario of Definitely. The, yeah. Whereas I actually, actually I could use a haircut. So in my situation, I think <laughs> would, they thought I'd be you, all right with it. <laughs> free haircuts yeah, from the government. Exactly. <laughs> it I'm is like bold. North Korea. Huh? I'm going bold and I haven't read in years. This would be a good society. <laughs> yeah. to, to you fit in. in. I, I do well there, I feel. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you just never can bring out your memoirs as a stand-up comedian. I don't think or my musician. memoirs are going to be a necessary thing. gift to society. <laughs> you think so? Oh. No, I don't. Oh, I would read it. If it's less than 250 80% pages. 80% of my memoirs are going to involve you as it is. I don't see why you would end up. I'm so fucking oh. sick of the sight of you. <laughs> oh, I'm flattered. <laughs> I'd read it. Well, I'd listen to the audiobook of Guy Monday. <laughs> Otherwise, forget it. Who, who reads the book? Guy Monday. Oh, yes. Oh, Oscar Werner. Oscar Werner. <laughs> Who's no, just dead. a guy named Guy Monday. That's his, <laughs> a new. We find a guy who's called that and let him read that book. Go- would... Somebody Google it. I swear, there's got to be that, Guy that... Monday in the world. Oh, I hope so. I hope so. He's like weirdly related to Guy yeah. Ritchie. If if someone Google's it and writes in, and I will send them a free CD. I promise. <laughs> hey, that's a deal. Search yeah. for Guy Monday. All right. Yeah. That, there's a deal right there. Okay. So yeah, he goes about his business of of burning books. And then he meets a woman on the train. And that's a, I don't know, a very, uh, it, it was supposed, I think, I think to be a meet cute moment, but it was more of a meet creep moment. Yeah. No, because he was creepy looking, but she crept up on, she, him. She Do, crept on him. Those trains were creepy as hell though. <laughs> Everyone was just really good looking and touching themselves. Or kissing the glass. Yeah. That or, one woman oh, in the first Oh, yeah, she scene. kissed the glass. Yeah. That was weird. And then, I think they're all on drugs. That's, that's maybe the Maybe that's just the uh, China show. Yeah. yeah. I also thought it was weird that a guy walked through the shot. Oh, yeah. And I thought it was, like, so strange. Like, it seemed like it was wrong, but maybe they didn't have a chance yeah. to do it again or something. It was like, <laughs> looked like a mistake. We have limited me. train time, yeah, guys. Yeah, exactly. Like, this was the last <laughs> shot. It's lunch. Like, you know, IELTS going to be all over us. We better finish this up. <laughs> Yeah, um, and and he he uh, well so, not questions. They they have a nice walk and talk. Walk, yeah, and she put, she plants the seed, right? Yes. She puts the idea that do you read the books that you burn? Yes. And I guess I suppose that's the first time you realize. Yes, and he, he, she questions the propaganda. Yeah. Not outright, but through her questions. Sure. Like she didn't, that was very smooth of her, not giving herself away as a collaborator. Like inception. Like yeah. you can't, you can't just tell the person, you got to plant yeah. the seed, seed yes. three Wait. dreams down. Yeah, exactly. And then maybe. You know. Yeah. 
Yeah, everything's a copy of something. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> What a dumb movie. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this movie. <laughs> Not this one, Inception. Yeah. This one was great. I really enjoyed this. <laughs> Don't watch Inception, anyone. Watch this. Watch this. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, and um, and uh, Guy Monday uh, meets. Well, we introduced to his wife after that nice talk. Who is played by the same actor? Yeah. Yeah, that was a detail they didn't really go into. Well, because he what? said, like, when, when he first met a girl on the train who fucked all his shit up. Yeah. Um, it was In like, a good you, way. Yeah. You look like my wife. Yeah. And then they had the same actress playing both this girl and his wife. But there was no <laughs> real, like, why. Like, Skimping what? on budget. Yeah, <laughs> yeah was... I think you're right. I think you're right. <laughs> they just changed the haircut. And uh, I think at least the, 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 the girl on the train was... Better dressed and better looking. See, this is even though it's the same actress. <laughs> yeah, smarter dressed for sure. Yes, like the other yeah. one was just kind of like what Boring you see, desperate housewives. housewives. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, no, more Stepford wives. Stepford even. wives. Yeah, yeah, that really clean cuts. Well, in this case, 60s futuristic looks, basically. Yeah. yeah. This whole thing is a classic example of a French person just being lazy. The director was just like, <laughs> I don't see any reason why we can't make this film with only three actors <laughs> and nine shots. <laughs> and, and, and an unlimited supply on apples. Yes. Apples and, apples. and everything apples. <laughs> yeah, so um, we introduced to his wife, who was a drug addict and a, a, I guess a TV addict as well. Um, Like yeah. she's she's totally detached from reality. Well, not totally, but because yeah, no, I think you're right. Totally, like it's she, 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 she's she's far away from being a normal human being. Yeah, at, at one point they were. I guess it was a television show they were watching. Yes, and the idea of the show is they ask questions oh, and then so they say her name yeah. and she answered. And as far as I could tell, there was no clear sign that they heard her answer. Yeah, they just played along. And then she was very proud that she answered everything right. Yeah. And when um, Guy Monday pointed out yeah. to that, actually, maybe it wasn't you. It could have been any Linda. Yeah. She got angry that, you know, he would accuse her of not believing right. this. So, yeah, she's. I think she's totally detached from reality. And that scene leads me to believe that Dora <laughs> the Explorer is a propaganda machine to brainwash children. Because <laughs> yeah. they use the same damn technique. Oh, that's show. true. Yeah, totally. Wow. I didn't even... Because I never watched Dora the Explorer because we didn't have that here. Yeah. You, you had to have cable to get Dora the Explorer. So <laughs> I point out, I didn't watch it either, but I got yeah. a niece and a nephew. Who oh, okay. It. Yeah. So, oh, God damn. At, well, at least it's not Barney the Dinosaur. Oh, yeah. Well, that, that wasn't was. propaganda. <laughs> Or was it? I don't know. I don't know. Did you buy one that, of those toys? I didn't know. That, that, so, that sounds like somebody who has been brainwashed by the Barney the Dinosaur machinery. Yeah. <laughs> there, there was that. Dinosaurs that, didn't that, exist. This that, is that, bullshit. That's, that's the first war in the future yeah. is between Barney the Dinosaurs, Faithfuls, and uh, the religious front of Dora the Explorer. Right. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's going to be horrible. Yeah. <laughs> Like the battle songs are the are the, the, the theme songs, and Barney the Dinosaur famously was used as a torture method by the Americans. No, <laughs> seriously, is, wow, there's so I much can, I don't yeah, know. I can believe it. Yeah, they used to play 24 or 48 hours on a loop, and blasted it at a, I think 100 decibel or something like that, like really loud into a chamber where where one of the uh, supposed terrorists were. Yeah, it's. it's Nope. I, I listened to it for like six minutes and I was already, oh my God, I'm gonna die. <laughs> yeah. Yay. So, so something more upbeat. Yeah. And that's his <laughs> wife overdosing. Oh no. Do, do we have something in between? I between the overdose and... Yeah, I think he... It, does, he does he do the book first? Nah, I think he... Oh, you're right, because I think, I wonder if maybe that overdose was an eye-opener, a traumatic experience yeah. made him question his lifestyle. Oh, and, and his then, wife's lifestyle. And then that's when he started bringing home books and yeah. reading books. Yeah, yeah, and because I guess he was in his own prison with his wife being more or less unresponsive and... Yeah, not really there because she takes a lot of pills. But he was that way at the start because when the chief was questioning him, he was just going along with everything. Oh yeah, he was like, "Do you like this sport? Yes. yes. Do you like this sport? Yes. Do you like this sport? I like all sports. Yeah. Do you like this? Yeah." 
and that was maybe the moment. Right, and the commander also advises him like twice to up his dosage. Right. Yeah. So he's more docile or more... more I, I mean, if, if I was stoned yeah. all the time, I probably would just go along with everything too. <laughs> <laughs> so you like have flashes like in between where like, what the fuck am I doing right now? Am I really serving hamburgers? Really? And then you're like gone again. And, and then, then you take another pill. Yeah. Like, burgers are red. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. So, so we, uh, oh, we have the KKK newspaper in between. Right. Yeah. Which I <laughs> for think. For some reason. Yeah. Which was never explained. It was, that was like a, a flash that you caught for a second. Yeah. Um, also, with no black people or Jewish people being yeah. well, apart from the two offensive terms used for black people and Jewish people right. in one scene, yes. maybe what was the name of the director? Uh, uh, I can look it up. Wait, ah, wait a second. No, no, no. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna look it up. But well, keep talking. I'm about, I'm about to start trashing him. So maybe yeah, that's trash, him. Tra- trash him. Oh, no, so trash him. Unnamed he, director. Unnamed <laughs> director. It was probably Francois Truffaut. Oh, Francois Truffaut is maybe Truffaut. Yeah, a bit of a Nazi. <laughs> Maybe he was part of the Vichy regime. Um, he was born in 1932, so at the end of the war, he was only 13 years old. Yeah. So, oh, he was really young when he made that movie in that case. Ah, 1966, mm. so he was, what, 32. Wow, that's that's a young director right there for such a big, big movie. Yeah. Thank you for like saying Like Oscar Werner was a young. star at that point, <laughs> and I, th- I think Ju- Julie Christie was too. And the rest of... Like, there was no bad actor in this movie, in my opinion. No. Uh, well, well, wait a minute. The two <laughs> twins at the end, which oh, I'm skipping were, ahead. They were cute. But they were not good actors. Well, they had a shtick. And that was they had a shtick. They weren't good actors like Keanu Reeves is not a good actor. Like, they have, <laughs> they have a shtick and that's it. They have one thing going for them, and that's being twins. Yeah, well, watch it. Yeah. <laughs> Stay away from Keanu, man. No, no, Keanu is great. I love Keanu. He's like the best, worst actor. I, <laughs> All right. I'll, I, 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 I watched, I'll accept that. I'll I, like, accept I watched that. like 90% of his movies. Oh, me, I yeah. watched I, Thumbsucker I like, for some reason. I feel like they just absolutely nailed the casting in Bill and Ted, and directors were like, this is yeah. a good actor. And it's like, oh, no, <laughs> he is just Ted. Yeah. Was he Bill? I can't remember. He was Ted. No, he was Ted, yeah. Yeah. He didn't even get first billing. Ted Theodore Logan. That it's was not it. Ted and Bill. It's Bill and Ted. He didn't even get first billing. Well, but Ted. Alex Winters, because he was going on to bigger things. They thought, right? He was in The Lost <laughs> Boys. So was it or what though. else? Yeah, he was gonna. He was gonna cream it. And and, and he was like the, categorically the better looking dude between the two of them. Uh, yeah. Again, this is like really. I don't know. I mean, young Keanu was he had that weird flabby double chin thing going but he on. He had the hair. Yeah. I love. I love. I love Matrix. Bill was shorter. Come on, Matrix, especially Matrix Two, Matrix Reloaded. He was fit. Uh, y- yeah. He looked good. I'm still gonna go with Ted. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going okay. Ted. Going Ted. All right. Okay. Yeah, so Anyways. that that closes up the Bill and Ted segment of this show. Yeah, <laughs> glad, glad we snuck that in. <laughs> and we're going back to Fire and Head. Like, this is a dreary movie, through was, and through. It, gave it had, me, got me depressed, got me very depressed. It had, like, two funny scenes. And they weren't even that funny. It was yeah. like, it, it, the humor was implied. Yes, but. and it had a happy end of sorts. But still, I don't, like, it... It, it scratches it, too far on our own reality, I think, to make it to like it's not detached enough, like a, a, a like a Star Wars is, mm-hmm. like a sci-fi movie that's so far away or so idealistic, like Star Trek is. It's really dreary, really dreary. Mm-hmm. I think, like, yeah. yeah, even though it has a happy end of sorts. It does, but where? So what? What yeah. happened after that? So to to finish up the plot, basically. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he ends up reading a lot of books and right. he gets really into it. Yes. And and then they end up finding the uh, the girl he met on the train. Yeah. That's played by the same actor as his wife. Yeah. She lives in a house that has a library. Right. So they end up finding that library and and. Oh, that's a different house. No, that's the same house. That's no, that's same. a different house. No, that the old lady had the oh, library. The old lady. I thought they both. But were the there. old okay. lady knew. 
pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the old lady, uh, the old lady was friends with her. Right. They were, the, the, they were both teachers and both fired. Oh, they, so they didn't live together. They were just teachers. Yes. Okay, I missed that part. But, but yeah. basically the firemen come, find it. Yes. And they're going to burn the houses. And yeah. the old woman decides she's going to Martyr stay. herself. Yeah, she's going to stay and die with these books. Yeah. And then, Which is a crazy last stand. And yeah, and then Guy Monday's very, very upset about this. He can't believe this is happening. Oh, yeah. So Over go, books. Yeah, he goes home, and then his wife... And actually, this is interesting. This is Well, I part, guess he never killed somebody. Like, they always say that they just arrest them and get them to re-education and stuff Re-education. Like, yeah. This was the first person that put their line, life on the line yeah. for the books. And then when he got home... His wife was having a little party. I thought it was interesting. It actually, this movie passed the Bechdel test. Oh, yeah. Where there was two women talking to Four each other. Four women in total. Yeah, but not totally because they, they didn't really have names. Yeah. Like, they were just characters. But still, they talked about things other than the main character. Yeah. So so that was, you know, somewhat impressive I, on some type of level, I suppose. <laughs> French, maybe. So, so anyway, so he ruins the party because he reads them a book and they get all upset. Yeah. And, and so now his and wife that, is that pissed. Breaks, yeah, yeah, that this breaks is his now, wife. This is the moment where his wife doesn't like him anymore, knows he's bad news. Well, bad news in her universe. In her universe, yeah. Yeah, because she is, I guess, loyal to the system in a way that only a really ill-informed good person can be. Mm -hmm. Because she... She wants him to get rid of the books first. Like, this can be, still be saved. His life can still be saved. Like, I think she is really so indoctrinated by the existing system that she really thinks that she's the good one in this scenario. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Which everybody is their own hero, right? I mean, oh, yeah, true. Yeah, of your own story. Of my right? own story. Yeah. So then after that, what happened? That was when... Uh, uh, that <laughs> well, was when she the, the the girl that looked like his wife yeah. right she escaped yes did we ever learn her name um, I don't think I don't think we ever learned her name no but I can maybe maybe she's right. she's yeah I'm, I'm, as it. so she ends up she ends up uh, escaping and he goes and he finds her and then they have to go back to the house because there's a list of Clarice. all Clarice 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 yeah sorry Parfait. Yeah, it, again, it, it, every time it's a French, it is a French movie, even though everybody speaks English. Right. <laughs> and so, so all the, uh, in my head, all the, all the names are French for some reason. Oscar <laughs> Werner. So he ends up yeah. getting with her and then they yeah. burn this list, the secret list of all the... Stashes. The stashes, where you can find all the books. Yeah. And then she goes off to the book people, they say, I'm doing air quotes. Yeah. And uh, he goes and he has to, well, why did he leave, right? He was going to yeah. try to try to sabotage the firemen yeah. right. who don't fight fires, just burn books. Yeah. If anybody missed like that. Like he is, uh, he is uh, the first, that was way at the front of the movie while they had the walk and talk. She asked him, like, uh, didn't, didn't firefighters used to uh, fight, fight fires? fires. And he's like, this is a preposterous idea. We always burn books. Yeah. Like, that's how far in, in the future we are. That but he could still read. Like, yeah, yeah. the, the well, plot I, is... Well, I guess uh, the truth is more bendable when you don't have open sources to, to right. books, but you can definitely transport just the knowledge of reading to somebody by scribbling down or making, like, stones into letters or something like that. Everything that is erasable, even though you don't have books themselves. Right. Yeah. Right. So but then, yeah, the book people. What, yeah. what happened after that? Do you remember? <laughs> Jack is, um, that was, was out for it for I'm like five minutes. No, it's, it's so, uh, isn't that when his wife uh, rats him in? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you out. Remember? Out. Uh, in. Rats him know. in? How can you rat somebody in? Oh, whereas ratting someone out makes... No, to get the rat out of the, of the hiding place. Oh, screw you. All right. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but in this case, they ratted him in in, in in some sort of way because they went, didn't tell him that they were going to his house. Yeah. And then he's like, this is my house. Yeah. And then he, they made him get rid of all the books. And that's where he finally snaps, which is a, a good turning point, I think. But they, you see, the thing is they gave him the flamethrower that they carry yeah, really to burn stupid. his own books. 
And then what did he do? Yeah. <laughs> he fl- he flamethrowed all the people. <laughs> well, only one. Well, yeah, I the guess. The commander. He... I assume the other died of grief. <laughs> yes, Fabian. <laughs> Fabian, the real, the real villain in this whole story. Yeah. If, well, the I don't know. He, character. We never just... saw Fab- Fabian ratting him out because he saw... No, he did. Was, he I, did. He listened to him and that's when he, the guy uh, said, you have the book. After he burns his own pile yeah. of books, yeah. then he stashes But in the library, out. he already catches him stashing Yeah, the book that and... was another weird moment that just didn't need to be there because there yeah. was no comeback from it. Yeah, weird. Well... <laughs> So, so then after yeah. that, he ends up escaping. He just yeah. runs for it. And he follows the, the instructions down the tracks all yeah. the way to the book people. Yes. And then they explain there the book people are people who have memorized an entire book. Yeah. And then when they die, they yeah. tell the book to a younger person. But we also see the first time that the government is really a force to be reckoned with. Right, yeah. By having the best... Oh, Flying yeah. Man oh, yeah. oh, that was your probably best moment. Here. Oh, I loved it so much. Like, the, it was, first of all, it was a shitty 60s green screen effect, which I already, I, I love I those. Adore, yeah. I, I love those. And then it looked really futuristic what they had as weaponry and everything. Like, they had, like, I don't know, hand cannons and jetpacks, but without an exhaust, so it must be some kind of anti-gravitational thing. Yeah, I, I don't know if we need to go that far. I don't think they thought about it that far. They were just uh, like, I don't know, these things make you fly. Yeah, <laughs> and you a, get a cool wiser. And it made cool noises, too. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And which kind of gave them away, like... If you send something, send something silent to hunt somebody down. Well, you're talking about something... having four men dressed in black flying through the sky. Like, conspicuously <laughs> is not... <laughs> Honey, I scored a new role in a new French movie. Yeah. What are you playing? Uh, I'm drone guy number three. <laughs> Do you have any lines? No, the buzzing noise is way too loud. <laughs> I still get paid. <laughs> So then he yeah. eventually gets to the place and they yeah. accept him because he's yeah. now one of them. Yeah. And then he watches television. And on television, it shows a guy who doesn't even really look like him yeah. get gunned down by like a machine gun helicopter. But it does a, it's a laser gun. Yeah. And then they zoom a in on the really back cool of his one. head. Yeah. And that's how they identify him, that this guy has the similar looking back of the head. I guess that's a government policy to fake somebody's death if they defect. Or, if they or, defect. Yeah, yeah exactly. You're, so you've you got to keep it going. You yeah. can't... Can't let know that anybody ever won. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's smart propaganda, smart right? Smart propaganda. Yeah, yeah. They like the machinery turns very efficiently in this yeah. system. This is like the the, the the dystopian thing theme is that the government runs so smoothly and everybody is so complacent that there is no conflict. Like basically, the people gave up to fight the system. Yeah, exactly. The system won. That's the scenario here. Yeah. Like you had all that strife and all that war and the system won. And it's a shitty system. <laughs> but in the end it's so but there is a, another movement. Oh you yeah. Know, even though they won, yes. there's still there's still an under Yeah, you can't of, kill an idea. Yeah. So so in the end it was a happy ending and he got the girl. Yes. Sort of. Kind of. We, we didn't see them boning no. or anything, but yeah. you, you, it, it was implied. He only bones his wife and only once. Yeah, and she just, it looked more like she just gave him a hand job or something. Like a, yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, way yeah. they were laying, I, I'm not convinced they both. Also, she used the self defense lessons from TV to basically flip him on oh, the bed. Yeah. yeah that so was a nice touch. Nice touch, yeah, yeah. They had to tie that up to something. <laughs> Like, was that the lesson that they taught in the self-defense class? How if to bone your, yeah, yeah, how to give your you, husband a you, proper if, hand job. Yeah, get him you, on the bed, yeah. undo his robe. Yeah, yeah. See, I yeah. thought it was weird they were giving women education in that kind of society, <laughs> so that's what it was all for. Just yeah. basically telling your wife how to give you a proper handy. Yeah, but again, it's a, apparently a, 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 a generally a society without murder or any major crimes. You never see somebody stealing something. You never see see somebody being a scoundrel of sorts except for hiding books that's the one theme that runs through the whole thing <laughs> yeah but, but they they also they never showed the government they never showed like who is in charge who is doing right this. yeah and, yeah you know, right because obviously like i guess it it, it 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 lends to the theme of the government being faceless mm-hmm. like we're so far in the future and even if it started out as a dictatorship that dictator is dead now mm-hmm. and it, like in the case of the Big Brother, they keep it alive as an iconography. Iconography. Iconography? Iconography. Oof. 
Uh, that was a hard one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they, they they used that. Uh, they, they 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 went up above that. Like the the government is so faceless and and timeless. Like it's a monolithic block that always existed. Yeah. And always will exist. Like it's a yeah. It's like the church. <laughs> the Catholic Church. Right, right. <laughs> it will never go away. <laughs> yeah. No, so, that's, that's the thing. Yeah. It's too. It's too recent to be as faceless as you were saying it was. Because like, like the what was the the guy who got burnt in the end? The commander. The commander. Yeah. He's only billed as the commander. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. So the commander was talking about how he used to like remember before. Yes. And like, so that's within his lifetime. So it's sort. Of, it seems yeah. like. It's, I, maybe, maybe the proper like destroying all memory like yeah. all books and everything sped up the process maybe Perhaps. and there's uh, there's already one generation out there who doesn't even remember that anymore yeah but like, that, like one adult like generation that would take a couple of generations to really, to really like wipe out but, yeah but although I, I mean they don't have YouTube on this they don't have the internet yeah right? if you if yeah, you don't let anybody read anything yeah TV is only one way yeah the newspaper so is only very, one way you can't send in a letter to the editors yeah that doesn't work I, like i'm drawing a cartoon for the editors fuck you <laughs> like a like a, a middle finger and yeah. like then a, a three for page three because numbers still exist for some right reason. yeah well i guess yeah you, you, they, they, to you have, have to have some symbols sim because you need to change your channel it needs to be a different channel right well you could use rectangular green or oh. channel and red <laughs> red red Honey, switch over to red red dot. <laughs> yeah, I love that show on there, which doesn't have a name as well. Right. <laughs> oh no, Family Theater. I think that was uh, the name of the show. But anyways, oh, yeah, I think we're done with plot. Let's move on to plot. let's let's move on to cinematography. Thanks for the assist. First thing I loved uh, is the, how much they loved the zoom. Every time they oh, wanted yes, you to yeah. look at something, they zoomed in. Like yes. they zoomed in fifty times during yeah. this film. I think they just got a new lens and yeah. this and the guy the head of cinematography was like, like I'm gonna use this all the time. This is so awesome. <laughs> yeah. And they had that weird jump zoom as well at the beginning where the guy was on the phone. Oh, and she said she kept saying, Get out and yeah, kept and that, getting yeah, like two yes, feet close. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. I love that as well. Um, it is very 60s in 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 those flashy, uh, oversaturated uh, colors. Like the red was oh. really popping. Wait, do you mean at the beginning or just like throughout in, the whole? Oh, film? It, the intro was bananas. Yeah, the right. intro was like I was tripping out a little bit. On that <laughs> intro, that was... <laughs> yeah, that was a crazy intro, and and they 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 uh, also they said uh, uh, they they. They, they didn't use oh I guess that makes think, sense yeah do you that think they sense? didn't use credits because it's yes. a thing about not reading think, oh that's amazing oh yeah I also noticed that I didn't I get just that got you guys the, are brilliant yes oh, yeah the, there you go and yeah, because start, I was concentrating on the antennas and like that's a, the, the TV and surveillance yeah. metaphor yeah because they had pictures of all the guys walking in and out that one house where they were like identifying them mm -hmm. in like the last fourth of the movie. Yeah. And um, yeah, that, that I was like, oh, they, so they have to have some kind of video camera surveillance system or something like that. Some CCTV sorts of technology. And that I, I thought that really nicely tied in with the intro. I didn't think about the not book, uh, the, the book reference. Yeah. Oh. The book book reference. Clever. Yeah, yeah really clever. Also, really clever. there was only like three actors in the whole film. Yeah. So <laughs> it probably was just cheaper to get the most intense guy no, in the well, world to say their names. Well, we have, we have I guess we have three main and one supporting actor. Who were the four people in the jetpacks with masks, by yeah. the way? <laughs> For sure. They just repurposed them, gave the visors to not be yeah. Yeah. visible. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that... I guess they, they used all their budget on the train. Because that train... Yeah, they, they oh, built yeah. a monorail and they were no, like, that, oh, I shit. Think, I think the monorail already existed. <laughs> I hope. I hope. Because that would have eaten up, like... I don't know how much the budget was, oh, but... Oh, yeah. You're kidding. Yeah. With French labor? Not no at that way. time. 
They're gonna strike every two days. <laughs> you, you even noticed that they, they had some scenes where the scene happened in forward and then again in reverse. Oh, like yeah. When the guy put on the outfit, yes. burned the books, and then took off the outfit. That oh, was... The- that, that I, was genius. I, I, I loved all the reverse shots. Yeah, they were, were all very, very well done. Yeah, because the the they had sometimes they had like 10, 12 background actors, and they all had to basically do it in everything reverse, in yeah. do everything in reverse, and that's just brilliant. Which also made like while he was putting on the fireproof clothes. Yeah, Oscar Montag, sorry, guy Montag, guy Monday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It made it look like so. Look, it made it look so smooth because in reality he was taking them off, which is way faster than putting, putting them on. It on yeah. yeah, so it all looked really smooth. That I, I loved that. Yeah, and then they had they had a fire pole in the fire station, and yes. they could basically somehow magically they went up the pole. Which, yeah, it's some force field again. There has to be some anti gravitational anti gravitational technology. Yeah, that but apparently you can't put them in cars. Can't put in cars. No. I guess well, that that special effect would have been too expensive, so yeah. they used an old fire truck. That's that's <laughs> one thing I want to go into. Maybe I'm too dim to pick up on it. But yeah. like, why halfway through did it stop working for Guy? Like the upwards. Fire I never got up. that either. Because he like he. Oh it's yeah. Not like he gave up on it. He shook it. He was like, "What the fuck's this?" Yeah. And at first, I thought they were starting to like, "Oh, he's Messing turning like let's cut off his powers or whatever." Yeah. But, that, um, that was maybe supposed to symbolize something. His internal conflict. Or so yeah, or maybe. Maybe yeah. it takes a lot of yeah, concentration to. But then maybe it's mind sort, activated. Then there's some sort of like Harry Potter esque pole that knows when your heart's not in it. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. it's no, not. Yeah. Don't fuck with that. This is not sci-fi. Yeah. No, I, I was, I also didn't get that, and I. I yeah, mean, you, you don't get the level of technology really pegged because you have basically iPads, you have basically flat screen TVs, or effectively you have flat screen TVs. Yeah. Who look better than most flat screen TVs nowadays? Yeah. <laughs> um, you have you have those flying machines. But they 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 also something that's really tough to predict. Very few movies get it is the creation of like the personal computer, right? Oh the yeah. IPhone, yes. The, the or Samsung internet. Galaxy. I with, think the internet. Well, it, it kind of existed back then. Mm-hmm. But, but I also also think they they were kind of gutsy when they did the multiple shots like. He had a, t- a telephone, and then he went oh, into yeah. you know the bathroom. There was a telephone yeah. there, and that was like oh kind yeah, of, you know the idea that there would be multiple, multiple telephones. Phones, that, yeah, yeah. It's, oh, that was that was actually and you it was interesting. Just put it down and pick it up. Pick somewhere it up somewhere else, and, else and, it. and it's the same line yeah. and stuff. And that was like because I know in the '90s we had multiple telephones. You could yeah. do that, like yes, you could, and it like you could hear the other phone. And it didn't yeah. sound as good. And you'd Dude, be like, Mom, was, put down the phone. Mom, the, I got it. That, Mom, I hold on. Mom, I got it! Put on the fucking phone, That was Mom. used in, as, as, a, as a plot device in so many fucking 90s TV shows. Yeah. Like, every TV show in the 90s had, like, four cutaway, uh, multiple people speaking, and then somebody picking up and somebody removing. Like, I think uh, uh, Full House did that more than once, mm. I think. <laughs> but they, so they got yeah. a few things, but really yeah. they didn't very accurately predict the gadgets of the future but it's yeah. I don't blame them it's yeah. impossible well yeah let's let's stick to cinematography, cinematography for, for, for a bit no no it's fine again this show is all about <laughs> tangents and um, I, I thought there were some creative shots I yes. thought the um, the uh, the fire engine yeah. uh, shots weren't weren't too bad yes for the most part, it followed the action. Is kind of looking at what I, I want to look at. The the one I my 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 uh like oh I'm a I'm a movie critic voice where I was like yes yes was the walk and talk at the beginning like they get out the they get out the uh, the this, uh, space train mm. and then walk and it's one continuous shot until they reach her house where it's natural to cut and they had. They didn't have any... Yeah, it was one continuous shot and I I loved that one because it was filmed all on gravel. So either they had a a truck where they had a stabilized camera because the shot was really smooth Mm. because they couldn't put up a dolly system at that point. So it had to be a car or something rigged up to to move the camera really smooth smoothly over the gravel road and i yeah i it, it just ah i love it when when they put so much thought into a into into a scene right yeah yeah, yeah. it was very nice yeah yeah, I, I really enjoyed that one. Jack, you have anything to add? No, 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 <laughs> no, no. Yeah, um, 
I guess. Uh, oh, the the, the, the special the, the special effects the special effect uh, of her of the old woman burning. That was, was very that, that was, was impressive. Yeah. yeah, for 1960, where you couldn't really use digital effects to that to that level yet. She must have been yeah. pretty close to those flames in the real thing. Like that must oh, have, yeah. that must have been a painful scene. Or or they did a multi layer shot where they multi- built three stages basically and shot through all those three which is still messed up work because you you have to recreate the whole room and every, yeah it's insane to think about it. either way they did it it was really tough shot yeah, yeah and, and it looked really, really well done really well done well she and the 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 the, the commander burning oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, his legs sticking out so you could see oh yeah he's yeah. in there but yeah man, yeah his face down in the pan kind of just crawled down and then they yeah. cut to that so <laughs> I mean you can only get one that yeah. was a really weird scene because like, like when he first starts burning his hand to avoid getting shot they just pan to his face and he just yeah. like eh. yeah <laughs> it's just like not yeah. giving a shit that yeah. he's being burnt alive. And yeah, and he, his last words were like, "I'm very disappointed, basically, in you, Guy Montag." That's like, so he like the mum thing, where it's like, yeah. "I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed." Yeah. That's, how, <laughs> that's how just to that last little, you know, uh, in the yeah. shoulder. Yeah. Like, oh, you like that? <laughs> oh yeah, totally. And and we have the Apple guy. I guess that's part of the cinematography too, because it just shows you who the character is, and he's Apple guy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's Apple guy was actually I don't want to skip ahead, but that yeah. was my one of my favorite moments. Yeah. But I'll, I'll explain yeah. it later. We'll what? get to that. There was one scene that really visually was just weird. Was I? It was towards the end. I think that is when like guy picks up a phone at some point, and like half of the screen just sort of like goes to oh, black. Yeah. It just sort of slides in, so it's yeah. just focused on him, and then it goes back again after he's oh, off right. the phone. I totally forgot about that. And one. it's just like. At no other point in the film did they do anything like that. It was yeah, like, it was why? a one-off. I guess I guess that was a cool thing to do back then. And uh, this is so clunky. And, like, and the editor was like really proud of it, and I was like, I, I want that in the movie. And like the director's like, ah, oh, god damn it, he's my cousin. Fuck. All right, keep it in. <laughs> uh, the, the people who sponsored it were like. We got this guy who yeah. <laughs> has this new technology that says is going to make this movie a hit. Yes. Well, let me present it to you. Yeah. yeah. Penguin like... Books or whoever sponsored the, <laughs> the movie. Or oh, the KKK. Or the KKK. <laughs> Anybody could have sponsored this 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 movie. Like I, at the at the beginning, I first thought there was a Mercedes mercedes star on the on the engine uh, on the fire engine and then i'm like oh no 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 it's just a symbol again of which is a, a dragon it was like a dragon thing I yeah was not like a medieval clear. medieval yeah dragon symbolism something spewing fire something probably. that yeah. yeah yeah so um yeah um i think we're done with the cinematography and we can move on to sounds because there was some. Um, I don't know. I, I don't. Know. I thought it was okay. I, I, yeah. I wouldn't say the score really enthralled me. Yeah. yeah. Like it wasn't like the Star Wars kind of will remember. It was this. just. The, but it, it, was, it fit well. I liked yeah. the Glockenspiel parts. Yeah, I was. Oh I, yeah. I one of the few notes I have written down was unsettling xylophone. <laughs> <laughs> when was that? Just when. Generally, whenever it was being played it was unsettling oh, yeah. it was uh, oh, the when creepiest he, when, use of the happiest right. instrument when, when, your next when, album when, when, <laughs> guy, when, when Guy Montag was ruffling through his commander's files yeah that, that they had that and also that was back to cinematography a great shot of him going up the up the pole the commander and you have like 12 people in the background eating and he walks and they through. had to do all that backwards yeah, yeah it was really impressive I yeah. thought so too yeah, yeah that was that was pretty sweet uh, but yeah you had that music in there as well and yeah. like oh fuck this was a really tense scene and I think the music really added to that yeah yeah again very unsettling yeah I thought but on the other hand I didn't like the the, the fire engine music at all oh yeah yeah I guess it didn't I don't know. That was too intense for, what's for, going for, on. for two minutes of driving. Yeah. And, for and four a, times or five times in this same movie. Same scene over yeah. and over again, too. For such a fruity-looking fire engine <laughs> as well. That was the most ridiculous fire truck. 
I, I guess that was the understatement. Like none of the none of, except for the uniforms, everything about this government looks very non-intrusive in a in a in a in a violent way. Like they don't have they don't have uh, like a, a crazy tank or or even the the I guess the helicopter with the laser gun. <laughs> well, they they will come into your house and set it on fire though. So that's But the house is fireproof. So yeah. just everything inside the house will burn, <laughs> including old ladies. Yes. Well, apparently they haven't mastered the technology yet to make women fireproof yet. Yeah. yeah. It would have been cool if she it was a Marvel movie and that was the origin story for The origin story for yeah. for, for for what's his name from from Fantastic Four? Human Johnny Torch. Blaze, yeah, 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 Human Torch, Johnny Blaze. But as an old woman. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Hey, Marvel is doing all, all sorts of crazy things nowadays. Okay, Marvel, buy the rights to Fahrenheit 451 and redo it with superheroes. <laughs> as a superhero origin story against li illiteracy. It's like license to print money right there. Yeah. <laughs> Look, Marvel and Disney turn shit to gold on a daily basis. <laughs> they could, they could, like... They, they're redoing all the Disney classics. Why not expand on all the classics? Why not? A Disney, a Disney uh, uh, Casablanca, for example, <laughs> or a Disney Gatsby. Come on. <laughs> it's money right there. People will watch those fucking movies. <laughs> and it's Disney, so give yeah. Them, give them time. I'm sure they'll get to it. <laughs> as soon as the, as the copyright runs out, they're yeah. like... Zoinks. Was it 70 years for copyright? Yeah, or? I think so. Yeah. yeah. But the, Disney is lobbying hard to make it infinite. So they can keep the, the rights to, to Mickey Mouse and stuff like that because yeah. they are running out now. So they, that's why they bought uh, Marvel. That's why they bought uh, the, the Star Wars franchise. What, to stop them from using Mickey Mouse? No, no, no. From, from in case the lobbying doesn't go through, they still have intellectual property where they have the cap copyright on. Right, right. Yeah, because everybody after that can use Mickey Mouse and, and, and all that that's the iconography. You can share yeah. the films for free to yes, anyone. Yes, exactly. Can yeah. So, not for actual Mickey Mouse movie from 2016, but everything from back there and the character themselves go into public domain. Yeah. Yeah. But, but surely Mickey Mouse is older than 70 years now. Mm, it's getting close. And again, they are loving to extend it and stuff like that. So yeah, it's, wasn't, all, wasn't it's all, it's all, it's all, yeah. Wasn't Steamboat Mickey in the 20s or something stupid like that? Or am I completely... You're not wrong, but it's from the death of the creator. It's 70 oh, years from the death so of from the... when Walt Disney died yeah, in 70 years. Yeah. Okay, right. Yeah, and he died around the, in the 50s. So, oh, oh, okay. So, so in 2020 or something like that, it's going to run out. This is how we do it. Intellectual proper thievery. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, what else about this? I, I guess uh, um, the, the, AD, the ADR lines weren't that bad because they, in the reverse shots, they had to move the lips in reverse to make it look natural when they were talking. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. Once, you, once you cottoned on to how many reverse shots they were using, yeah. They, you could notice it, but it was yeah. pretty well done. Yeah. Like it was, they were slightly, yeah, clearly dubbed, but you, I, I wouldn't have noticed it if I hadn't been looking for it. Right. For right. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, again, for 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 a sixties movie, the sound was very very sharp. Yeah. Yeah. I thought so too. Boy, um, yeah. good but sound you, effects. You did say it'd been digitally remastered. Yes. Right? Yes. Maybe there, there's some. The some original edit was that. garbage, man. <laughs> Back of like, you know that like when you put a blank. It was a tape silent in, movie. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Just, just not, no subtitles. No subtitles. Way, just a silent just, movie. It was implied what they were saying. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Would this movie work without sound? I don't no, know. Definitely totally not, not right? No. It, it needs the sound. Yeah. There's so much fucking exposition in the yeah, dialogue. Even with the sound, I, I'm not sure what happens. Well, because there's no, there's barely any text as well. So it's. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, and I, uh, coming back to the sound, I did love the, the, how in the way the, the the two theater actors were playing on TV, like what do you think, Linda? Yeah. <laughs> the way they were talking, like they were like the worst actors in the whole thing. <laughs> were those two guys who were like, 
But it, I guess it was meant to be that. I think I, I think that was intentional. Yeah. When they were acting between each other, it yeah. was quite you know theater esque and proper. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's going back to like Dora the Explorer, where yeah. it's just making it painfully obvious for the yeah. moron watching. Yeah. It. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> Why yeah. do you reckon they chose an Austrian actor for that role? Because like the accent well, seems Oscar so. Well, Oscar Wilde was hot back then. Does, do you reckon that's the reason? That's like his accent was very pleasant to listen yeah. to, but it seems so weird when like all the other accents around it are just so painfully English. Oh but, yeah. But also think of like. Uh, to borrow another Austrian with an accent that's in famous movies. <laughs> like, 50 Fritzel. years from now, when someone watches Terminator 2, they're going to be like, uh... <laughs> why did you pick why that? Why did they pick this guy? <laughs> yeah. nah, well, fair point. Well, uh, the thing about Arnold is actually that they wanted an Austrian in the first place or something with a, with a, with an ac- with a harsh accent because it sounded more robotic back then. It was a way to get around of digital uh, cutting costs, basically. Yeah, I don't know. If no, I no, buy that was that was that was that was an actual thing. I've, I, I can see he that. Was, but he was in before that. He was in Conan, right? yeah, and he like barely had any lines and everything. But he like he looked good, right? Yeah, he was that was big tough guy. Yeah, yeah and, and I think his career just developed to that. And I think they had to make an excuse of like, why are we using? You know, it's like, whoa, let's do, let's say this. Well, as a, he was the most Terminator esque Terminator they could get. <laughs> right? I still don't buy it. I don't know why a robot they, from the future would have They wouldn't take Danny accent. DeVito to play the, the, the Terminator. Well, no, but you could have got Sylvester Stallone to do it. Oh, yeah, try right, right. There, there Rocky many, was out. Yeah. There were many beefcakes of that era that they could have. Dolph Lundgren would have been fun as the Terminator. <laughs> he would have been a very young Terminator. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Swedish accent? Nice. Is he Swedish? I think he's Swedish. Or or Norwegian. Ah, shit. I'm going to get in trouble with that one. Um, (laughs) Yeah, so... um, um, Yeah, I think we're done with sound. So let's go on to Greg's favorite category. Best Moments. So my favorite moment in the film is right at the start, the first scene... This guy's sitting there, he like lights a cigarette and eats an apple. Again, a case yeah. of smoking and eating at the same time, which yeah. is weird to me. Maybe people do it. The and smoking then is very French. <laughs> he gets a phone call and the phone call is basically just like, get out of there. Yeah. So he... It's a female ru- voice. Yeah. But yes. So get he, out I, of there. He might have grabbed a book or he just got out of there and he took the apple. And when he runs out, they show a shot of him running out of the apartment and he takes a bite of the apple and then he leaves. And I was I was so yeah. focused in on that because I'm sure, all right, this guy's going to be a main character and There's that's them setting up how little he really gives yeah. a fuck. Like, he knows he has to move, <laughs> but he's going to outwit them. Yeah. And no, he was just a, a fucking dick. Whatever. And then, but like, then, yeah, and I'm watching, I'm thinking like, this is very, very sloppy. Like, how could you, why would you introduce a character and never show him again? Especially mm-hmm. the first character in the film and you don't kill him. Like either either you got to kill him or you got to reintroduce him, and then well, sure enough, really, at, yeah. at the end of the film, he's there and he takes a big bite of the apple, and I wonder if maybe the originally they were like because I don't know in the book if it's saying like the guy eating maybe the there's apple. like forty minutes of extra content yeah. of him fleeing but I, and everything and I like would, his storyline and then it intersects with with uh, uh, Guy Montag's uh, storyline. And like the movie was supposed to be two hours and thirty minutes long. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been better served being that long. I feel like there's there's a lot they. Yeah, you, they didn't. could have fleshed out the, the government More system. More story, yeah, yeah, and a lot, yeah. But but anyways, introduce I, a real main villain. But I think what happened is originally they were like they're not going to know it was him. If we show this guy at the end of the movie, no one's going to know why that was significant. Yeah. So we got to give him something, and they probably stayed up at night, no idea what's going on anything like how are we possibly going to do this they tried him in this suit and all the costume and and finally he was like I got it yeah and the guy brings an apple (laughs) so you love that one that was my favorite because nowadays the trope is that evil guys eat the apple that's that's a that's a. Oh, I, I didn't make that grim connection. I didn't. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Is that that's... really a, a, a thing? Yeah, nowadays. Can you give it... some examples of it? Oh yeah, sure. Uh, um, Deadpool, the... Deadpool did it. Um, um, uh, like uh, Ajax from yeah, Deadpool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, he I eats an. A, yeah. He's in, in that, two that's scenes, the first I think. Scene, right? He's yeah, he eats an. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Then Malfoy, I think, in two movies, eats an apple. 
Um, I had no um, idea because I know like the Wicked Witch of the West or not her. Uh, who that, 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 that's oh, several um, instances. Cinderella, Cinderella no, not Wicked Beauty. Sleeping Beauty. Yeah. She gave her an apple. Yeah, and that's what did the deed. Yeah, and like the serpent gives the apple. So giving an apple, I agree that would be bad. Yeah, eating it, I don't know. I'm it's, not it's convinced. It's a hard fruit though. An apple. Yeah. Is, it's a, a hard green fruit. apple. Is a if you hard threw fruit. an apple at me, I I'd get hurt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> angry hit me. You can't really take someone seriously. Take it in the shoulder. It might not you Throw it. If you're I like, guess, yeah, there's a lot like of factors. A, if you're like an MLB, uh, yeah, an MLB player, and, yeah, and he throws, throws an, apple an apple at you, you get knocked out. Okay, well, let's say, let's say, okay, fruit falling from a tree hitting you in the head. Okay, so banana. Yeah, then, then, uh, uh, grapes. Yeah. Uh, probably not. Be coconut fun. kills you. Coconut, okay, yeah. So coconut kills you. So circular, circular fruits are dangerous. Can we agree on this? Yes. An, ap- an yes. apple was so hard when it fell on someone from a tree, he had to discover gravity. He had to discover yeah, gravity. Yeah, be like, this there is fucking go. bullshit. I'm finding out why. Uh, the science is sound. Yes. Ah. <laughs> uh, Good. Okay. Good, good. So my, that's my favorite <laughs> that's, moment. That's your favorite moment. Jack, please, uh, indulge um, us. My favorite moment was being able to cram an Isaac Newton reference into this <laughs> podcast and not seeing like the complete moron that I am. Um, I don't know. I, I, it was kind of like, it was so weird. It was hard to, there wasn't a moment where I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was just so kind of like. You didn't get jolly at any point. No, that, it was just so food. dry the whole way through. There was yeah. a lot of it I really enjoyed. Yeah. It, it, it has the feel of a, a very sterile, clean world because you never see pets. You never see any farming equipment. Nobody has a garden. The, the, there's this no, they have gardens. Well, they well have very not nice like a, gardens. Yeah, yeah, but they're only ornamental. Oh, okay, yeah. You don't have, they don't serve an actual purpose. Yeah, no one's self sufficient. Yes. Uh, there's no, there's no, uh, like, again, no shopping malls or anything. So apparently everything gets ordered in or something like that. So it's like Amazon is apparently ruling now. The, 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 the single handedly ruling the market now. Uh, yeah, it was one drone shot of like somebody dropping off a packet, like a postman with a hover thing, and like, here's your daily dose of pills, and then going away again. Like, you never saw the, 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 the uh, ambulance. Like, that could have been really futuristic for all we know. Because it arrived in four minutes. I think it was faster than a fucking fire engine. Oh, well, <laughs> and the, um, was one funny thing about that where, like, yeah. they, they arrived to give his wife the blood transfusion. And the stomach and, pump. And the stomach pump. And they're like, you yeah. better get out. This gets messy. And they're yeah. wearing, like, plastic clothes. That's oh, how, that makes sense. That's yeah. how bloody it gets. Yeah. <laughs> and then they just say, all right, and you can come back into your room now. And it's fine. Yeah. And their white plastic suits are still immaculately white. There's no blood or puke or anything. Is that your favorite scene? (laughs) No. Yeah, fuck it. That's my favorite scene scene, for continuity's sake. (laughs) Um, My favorite scene, I guess, was um, every time they, like the, 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 the theme of fire and how it's used to, it is always a destructive force and I guess that's not best moment. That's a best theme. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Best theme. Best theme. Yeah, that, that's my that's my cop out. <laughs> and um, yeah, that would be the fire theme, and that he at the end liberates himself through fire by by burning his his immediate superior. That basically was brainwashing him up to this point and mm-hmm. tempting him and testing him and prodding him. And apparently he was very abusive to, to, the, to the cadets. So I'm guessing he, since he was already in the force and probably a commander at that point already when, when, when uh, Montag was starting there. Um, yeah, they, he was abusive to him as well. Mm-hmm. So it's like a replacive father figure. You never see their parents, by the way. It- or did any the, relatives to speak of. Did it do yeah. Do anyone else a bit weird that like all the cadets training for that job were like 18, 19 years old and then Guy Monday's what, in his 40s, like early to mid 40s? Yeah, and he's only fair. five years on the force. Yeah. Maybe he switched jobs. Maybe, but it, it still seems... Yeah. It, uh, it's nothing that's maybe the character is, the movie. Maybe they, they cast it... Like he was, I think, 32 at that time or something okay. like that. 
I, I'm, I'm going to look up how, how old he was at that at right. that point. Um, but, Possibly slight plot hole. We're not sure. Yeah, <laughs> but maybe the book character is younger mm. and still questioning. Like maybe that's that's the point. Okay, so he was born in 1922, so he was 44. At that. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. All right, he was he was an older fellow already, so he would be 39 when he started. Yeah, he definitely. Or he was like uh, studying. Not what books, stu what studying comic studying? books. <laughs> I have a degree in comic books. It if, didn't really pan out. I if, didn't get a job. If the state, <laughs> if the state's worried about you, I have a master's degree. If the state's worried about you being smart to the point where, like, they make having books an offense where people get yeah. arrested and reconditioned for it. Right. And they're all into, excuse the word, but they're all into the retardation of fool. Yeah. And it's like the pills and the, the dumbassing of TV. Right. Who's studying? Yeah. Who's building machinery? Who's inventing all those crazy technologies that they're using? Uh, yeah, again, like, I mean, this or is Or is very that already broad. existed when the conflict that was probably going on in the, in the, in the, in the I, past of that future uh, already existed? And that's just the remnants that, the te that, they, that they use to keep the populace in check. A, I think at least a two and a half hour film and that's what happens when you get a lazy Frenchman to direct it. <laughs> oh we're done we're yeah. done oh it's fine it's fine <laughs> we cut around it we're gonna use that fire engine scene four times <laughs> it's gonna be fine <laughs> like I think they padded out the runtime with fire engine yeah. scenes <laughs> they got the scene of him taking his clothes off and they're like you fucking nailed that no but yeah. don't I need to put them back on now we'll get it in editing it's fine yeah. <laughs> so my favorite my best moment was definitely the 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 um the first reverse shot because i was like oh this is a fucking reverse shot like i was i was like so pumped for that yeah. because i've i've seen that like in 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 recent movies but i've never seen it in a 60s movie mm -hmm. so far so it's it warms my heart that somebody was already doing it back then yeah all right yeah so we're done with uh Best moment. So let's move on to the secret category, and that's uh, oh shit! I do, no, oh. I I do remember what my best moment was. Now. <laughs> God damn it, Jack! Because it's just such like a, they. You guys were saying how much they predicted and yes. got right, but there was one moment uh, in the beginning where the guy's like hiding books in his television. Yes, and I thought the one thing that they, they got completely wrong is that's the polar opposite to like. What's how going it happens to... now like, yeah. <laughs> I, I would more expect to have like a book with like a slot for an iPhone carved into it <laughs> like, you know. yeah true yeah okay so that, that, that was, was your my favorite, favorite moment yeah, yeah. The, the TV uh, filled with knowledge yeah yeah <laughs> knowledge filled with TV instead yes well yeah that's life um, <laughs> also we got way better TV than they have like they don't have a Game of Thrones they don't have they only have reality tv and like daytime tv apparently of one the host talking and then that, that, that stupid family theater thing and what they kept calling her the cousin who uh, that that tv oh, host oh maybe she was constantly referred to as the cousin oh because uh, i i think that was the whole thing was that the tv was replacing family because she said right. we should get a second uh, view screen it makes your family grow yeah, yeah or bigger yeah and I think that's like a substitute for kids, basically. Right, yeah. Oh, because there was one point where it's like, you don't have kids, do you? Yeah. No, good. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I think that adds to it as well. It's, uh, yeah, very weird, but cool at the same time. So let's move on to a secret category. Jack, do you have anything to add? No, no. I'm good, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's... Um, Wait, yeah. sorry, I... No. <laughs> Son of a bitch. All right. Um, Future of now uh, of 1966 is now. That's the category because I, we already pointed out a few things that are happening now that were predicted by this movie. But what was the thing that like hit the hardest? For you. I think the pharmaceutical drug use, oh, and just the acceptance yeah. of it. Yes. I think everybody is like, they got a pill for everything these yes. days. We know that. And it's not illegal. Yeah, and it's like, encouraged, right? Yeah, like that's you, drug abuse, what exactly. she's doing. Yeah, yeah. And then when she actually overdoses, they're like, oh, this happens all the time. Yeah, we, don't, we got we're, this. We're not yeah. even bothered to send a doctor. They yeah. just sent those two plastic Guys who dudes. just do the stuff. Yeah. yeah. And, they got, and then she was totally fine. Yeah. Was, what combination drug overdose was it? 
like what number of pills did she take? Yeah, the, she, guy, the guys yeah. probably just got a fucking chart there. It's yeah, like, we've got four minutes. It's yeah. Funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, 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 so you like the. So you're I like thought the that pill was reference. one thing that was accurate. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Jack, what what what's his hardest? For for me, it was the moment they walked into his posh home. With the with the with the view screen where I'm like, yep, that's something you have today. Exactly the same thing. Then you have, except for not having a remote for some reason. Then it it basically um, then the, the 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 sliding door which was automatic. They didn't really show it that much, but it was yeah. also very automatic. I'm like, yep, that also exists nowadays. Like his whole home is like a future house now ish or mm. like 10 years ago maybe like that could have been a project 10 years ago where they're like oh my god we can build this now and it's all automatic and there's sensors and it can recognize your face that's why the, op the door opens and stuff like that so i like that yeah i, I really enjoyed that and um i also uh, the the propaganda machine like how how fast it turn over news so yeah, they, definitely. Yeah. yeah, which is, I mean, because they say you will be forgotten immediately at the end, where they say that he's dead, because they didn't actually capture him. They were like, yeah, yeah, we faked his death. It's faked fine. his death, yeah. and then yeah, and it's totally fine now. The yeah. world goes on. Yeah, and like that's the forty-eight hour news cycle nowadays. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and it yeah. totally happens today too, right? Yeah. Like if yeah, somebody can spew out and deny, and everybody will forget about it again. In yeah. Oh, it's, it's yeah, yeah like that was, was like I was like oh fuck. There, there was that. I don't know if you guys remember. There was a dentist who shot a lion. Oh yeah, reserve. right. And I don't know if like how it works out. Like apparently, this thing happens all the time. This is how the animal reserve stays open. Is that they let really rich people go there and yeah. shoot the lion, take the yeah. picture for their office, and then they can afford to keep a bunch of other lions alive. And when this guy happened, like it just became such a huge thing. And everyone was like, oh, this is horrible. How could this person ever do this? And, you know, so they put like an eight day ban, like we will never kill another line again. And after that eight days, they lifted it because yeah. they need that income. This is important and, and to the animal it. reserve. And nobody, and nobody cared because that's yeah. the story's over. We already did our thing where we pointed yeah. at the bad guy, made ourselves yeah. feel good. And now yeah. it's over. And yeah. so and I that, think that's similar to that. And the thing is, that that if we had internet back in 1800 it would be still the same thing like it's only the technology that enables us because you can get news from 7 billion people at the same time or 6.5 or how many people we are at now so having that amount of people you have to have an atrocious thing happening happening all the time basically that's just simple statistics at that point and uh, if you even if you had like three billion people or two billion people, that's still too many people for for keeping up with everything. Yeah. So, yeah. so I think it's only because it's not it's not it's not because of the amount of how shitty people are or anything like that, but just because we have the technology now. Right. So, yeah. Somber yeah. pause. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think you got it. Yes. Yeah. So so that was also a, a thing that that really hit hard as a prediction as well mm. and um yeah otherwise yeah there, there are some stuff there's some stuff that's not yet like if you have a, a a crazy overdose like that there's there's no way out nowadays there's no there's no guy that comes into your room and makes a Make, makes you better yeah, yeah they, that, they like, bring your body bag and that's yeah. it but yeah <laughs> i think another thing too and this this is up for debate but no one in the movie really fought back, right? Like the, the old woman, she kind of fought back. She more just fought back through pacifism, right? She just, yeah. I'm going to die with my books. If you want to burn these books, you're going to kill me too. Yeah. And he eventually fought back. But like, right. you know, everyone's very docile. Everyone just kind of, even yeah. though maybe they don't like what's going on, they don't feel they can do anything. Maybe that's, I, that's why the commander got burned as well, because he's also on drugs and... Basically, uh, Guy Montag at that point has superhuman reflexes compared to everybody else because he's not on drugs. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think it was the just Commander necessary just, for the plot. He, oh, had yeah, to, yeah. he had to win. But. Yes. Yes, I guess. But so. I, because I the other guy had a gun and a bullet is faster than yeah. the flamethrower. I, mean, I, I wasn't around in the 60s, but just from what I see, I think people fought a lot more and protested a lot more than they do today. So... 
I don't know. Maybe again, I, it's maybe, maybe it's I just yeah, yeah dug a hole they've, and they've created a more suppressed exactly. And I think today, society. I think today is a more suppressed society. Also, I think we don't yeah. quite in throw ways. it back like they in used to. Certain ways, in certain ways, in certain ways, in certain ways, in certain yeah. Because the thing is, with free information that we can, at least most of the people nowadays enjoy, you can still get around all the systems this is already a fleshed out basically flawless system that they ha they have in place there mm -hmm. we are still in a fighting intermediary phase where you have forces that want to restrict and repress but you also have this amazing technology that can help you even if you're in china like i was in china for 14 days and i fa got got to know some really well educated uh, progressive thinking people like I stayed with a with a woman where where uh, the the roommate was gay, and she was totally accepting of the fact and everything. So I was like, oh, this there's still and she knew about international news, even the stuff that was restricted because through back channels you still get the stuff. It's harder to find, but you still can go there. In this universe, except for books, you can't do anything. There's no, there's no uh, anarchist cookbook basically online where you can buy, build pipe bombs or yeah. something like that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that was an extreme example. Yeah, there. but no, but effective, effective. Yeah. That was, uh, that, that's going to be explosive in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> Pun. Um, <clears throat> um, I have to get some in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been very good with puns so far. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, I've wrote some down, but I, I'm not going to recite them. <laughs> thank you. That's the after, after yeah. thoughts, after we'll, we leave. Yes, you'll, yes. We'll save that for your next stand. -up okay. No yeah. <laughs> no doubt. All right. Let's move on to final conclusion. So, what did you think of the movie? Did, how, Overall, I enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah. I Like I said, I think the future is the hardest thing to predict. Like anything yes. we're doing now, even the stuff they did in the 90s is laughable by today's standards. Yeah. And, like, and, haha, they're using cell phones. Or, yeah, or, or, or yeah. whatever they predict, this is how the future will probably be. And it's, no, it's not even close to how it'll be. So, I mean, you got to remove that factor to kind of take it seriously for starters. Once you do... I, I really liked the the themes of the movie. Uh, I thought the acting was decent. I mean, yeah. and some of the special effects, like we said, were wow, that was actually really good. Even yeah. By today's standards, that would have okay. been a tough shot to yes. make look pretty decent. Yeah. And I oh, guess it was a book the, adaptation, yeah. so it's tough to say. You know, the story I enjoyed. Right. So, so keeping that aside, I thought the movie probably did a decent job at portraying like this is what the book is about. I feel if I read the book, I know generally what they're trying to say and stuff. And um, there, obviously, there's a bunch of plot holes that you know you have to fill in for yourself. Yeah. But, yeah. So if I get what do you have a scale? You usually give movies. No, like no, 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 no. So if no, I'm going to give it just a general recommend. Yeah, I would probably you know give it three out of seven thumbs up. <laughs> that's that's arbitrary, but <laughs> not would, six out of fourteen. I would I would well, get, lowest common denominator. Yeah. Oh, six out of fourteen burnt books. Um, <laughs> I wish I thought of that. <laughs> um, but I would I would really enjoy this on the on the silver screen, like of original film role. I've said that with past movies as well, but this one I, I really would like to see the actual Technicolor film, because that 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 some of the shots and everything would look probably really amazing those tracking shots of the fire engine that le that lens was far away and they had to manually follow the the fire engine that wasn't an easy task and seeing that on the big screen i think would add to the to to the cinematic feel of the whole thing like i have a big tv but it's not no film screen yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it's no movie screen film screen jesus uh, <laughs> um yeah, I thought, like I, I told you guys, I, I watched the movie when I was like eight or nine because it was on sale and I didn't have that much money back then <laughs> <laughs> on a VHS and I didn't enjoy it at all. It's not for kids. No, definitely it's not. not. 
family. This, yeah. this is a grown up movie. Yeah. Well, I guess you could watch it in a in a school setting, like a high school or something like that. Yeah, yes, but I, I mean, like, not for like, kids. Like you, you, you you let them read Fahrenheit 451 first and then watch the movie or yeah. discuss the movie or something yeah, like that. Yeah, you have to have the some themes. sort of like development Guidance. where you're, yeah. or like I, 15, 16 seems like a good age. Like if you had to put 1984 or Animal Farm in my hands when I was 12, mm-hmm. I would have told you where to go fuck yourself. But like <laughs> when I was 15, 16, I was like, yeah, just but, old enough to start being that's about that's about like the that. same age i read those books yeah yeah, yeah and uh, but that i i guess that and the be... general message is still sound today. yeah that 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 even if it's even if books are a dreamscape or 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 something they still store a common history in a way and they 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 show the development of the human race and where we came from it's a in, one of the most important aspects of history yeah and i think that makes it still a very poignant thing even today so so alone for that i would watch it again yeah, yeah. i i would recommend it even though yeah. it might be my I should have, I should have given it three fire engines out of seven. But, uh, <laughs> you had to think about. You were sitting on that. Yeah. You were smiling at me for like the last two minutes, and you're like, oh, "I got a good one. I got a good one." <laughs> but it uh, is a good one. I did. I would recommend it. I think yeah. everybody should watch it and read books instead of just listen to uh, audiobooks. I think yeah. that, that's my ultimate conclusion. Yeah. On this is I really want to read the books. I want to yeah. see if there's like they got deeper into like. Yeah. The darker stuff yes. surrounding this story yeah. than the film. How the government the works out. Yeah. I mean, like yeah. it's like you said, they might. I might just be a little bit too dense to. I never to said up. that you were too no, dense. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm saying I might be too dense to pick no. up on the fact that, like, because yeah. you brought up that, like, they've just created this faceless yeah. government. Yeah. Where it's not like uh, armed tanks with machine gun holes driving yeah. through the city. Everything just looks yeah. nice. So which is going to be go longer to suppressing repre- um, an uprising yes when everyone's happy not just yeah. scared but maybe yeah I'm just too like I wasn't quite sharp enough to pick up on the terror that yeah. that is but okay. for me I would like to I would like to read the book to see if they get any more into the darker aspects of that okay of that universe yeah I, I think that's that's one of the highest praises a book adaptation can get yeah. is making you want to read the book. Like, there are some shitty, shitty, shitty book adaptations out there, and this is not one of them. I think it has it has its own storyline. It follows Guy Montag. It concentrates on that. It makes that that development of him questioning the government, questioning the rules that are. And, and, and his final breakout and, 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 and blooming as a full person, as a book person. Book people? As a book people? Book person, person I think, yeah. But yeah, it's the you, say, you say all that without yeah. having read the book. Right. So it, it's Maybe he dies own, in the book. I don't know. It's good on its own, but as, it's, as an ab- adaption, yeah. adaptation from the, from adaptation, the original yeah. book. Shut up. <laughs> as an adaptation from the original book, it might be garbage. Yes. Like could, if, if you watch, no, the book is good. I, I heard, like I, I read some of the critics. Yeah, yeah. It, it's I, like, yeah. I mean, like The Shining was a great film, but just yeah. like when I went back and read the book, I was yeah. like, oh, this is kind of garbage. Isn't but, it a short story? The Shining. Yeah. No, oh. no, it's definitely not a short story. It's a, oh, whoa. It's, it's a big okay. one. But like with the exception of the ending, which the yeah. ending in the book was yeah. just fucking unforgivably bad okay uh, with the exception of the ending I thought the book was a lot scarier and a lot more interesting oh, but The okay. Shining as until I read the book yeah. after watching the film I didn't realise that The Shining on its own stands yeah. alone is a great film yeah. so it could, like we're saying this is a good adaptation of the book yeah. we don't know no yeah I'm, I might as actually, a standalone movie it's yeah. definitely as a standalone movie it's great yeah. I might go as far as to actually read the book this time and yeah. see All right. I'm kind of curious but. okay cool um, yeah, I think we're done now. Uh, plugs, guys. Where can people find you? What's what's, what's Google it? Greg Rikus, G R E G R E K U S. Do you have a website or something? I do. I have a .com. I have a bank app. I have we everything. We will put them down in the description below. Yeah. Yep. If you Google my name, you will find me and okay. write me. All right. 
Um, if you listen to the last episode of this podcast I'm on, just go back and listen to the plugs then because nothing has changed. I, have <laughs> I will just copy-paste them from the last basically, time. Basically, I have nothing uh, upcoming that wasn't already upcoming in that one. I've yeah. achieved very little. Oh, no, <laughs> you're, you're doing solid stand-up and you're doing... Like, I heard you play it for the first time a week you ago. Did. You're, you're yeah. the first person from the Vienna comedy scene to see me do music. Really? Yeah. Because you're good, man. Oh, thank you. I, I really enjoy... Uh, I, again, I hope to collaborate further with you yes we yeah. will, we will we'll discuss that yeah after the podcast um thank you guys for listening in um uh, we will see each other the next time well not see i guess but hear each other the next time on this here podcast and uh bye bye later